Okay. I just think it's valuable to get it done for oh, you. Oh, no, I, absolutely. Okay. It's one more thing knocked out. It's yeah. always set up. It saves me the 15 minutes. Is this, uh, what is this? Is this, uh, review. Review. first impressions? No, or? we've yeah. all played it multiple times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Set? Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Jesse Anderson from Quackalope. I'm Sheer from Quack and Co. Oh, indeed. Well, that is a thing. <laughs> People should stop searching for that. We're going to go ahead and be reviewing today Beast by Studio Midhall. And this is coming off of, for sure, the best game I've played of this yet. Not to say any... That's spoilers or anything. Of the people oh, you played with. How could no, people watch no, no. said game that you have played? Uh, it's going to be on a channel, a little known channel uh, called. Does Quackalope. that channel involve avian board game topics it, and ducks aplenty? It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> we have a gameplay, a three player that we just got finished. We have all played this multiple times. Yes. All played this multiple times in other varying player counts yeah. and groups. Yes. Uh, and so we thought, coming off the back of that game, we'd sit down, have a conversation, dive into it, and review it. Not in any way because we may or may not be... See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I had a review uh, last week on the channel or some point recently, yep. past two weeks, whatever it was, in the channel where it was a great review because it really had like, conflicting opinions. We had people on the on the video. It was a yeah. game called Three Tail and we were really bantering back and forth about the highs, the lows, and, and conflicting opinions about the opinion of the game. I still feel like I was a little harsh on that game. Not really the point. The point is, unfortunately, you will not be getting that on this video. You won't be getting that back and <laughs> forth of three conflicting opinions of how bad the game was but let's go into the the very I high do, level i don't want to undercut that i do have critiques that you oh, will be getting oh there's critiques okay there's critiques i don't want to i don't want to undercut that part there is a lot of positive to say though. yeah no i'm just saying people really enjoyed the back and forth they thought it really added depth to the review and i'm like it helps but only if someone actually had a deferring opinion anyways so the high level overview of beast is going to be this is going to be a classic hidden movement game in the vein of specter ops a fury dracker letters white chapel the new mind, mind management MGMT, yeah, yeah. Uh, management I, apparently I, I always say management is faster but it's mind mgmt technically that's but either way uh, all of these hidden movement games this is going to be i think the newest one on the scene and this is not actually the most popular genre it's a pop it's a well-liked genre but there's like Five to ten games that are known to be associated. It's the Grail very, games. It's, yeah. it's a hard. I would say it's a hard genre to break into. Yes, you have to be doing something different, unique, or special. Like, because the, it's a very simple yes. idea. But it's hard one to balance. Person's, one person's moving. Other people are hunting them. How do you make that fun for both parties? Yes. And that's the key part. How do you make it fun for both parties? And again, we'll do the review shortly. The very high-level overview over here is you're going to have hunters. You can play at a variety of play accounts, but you're going to have hunters hunting the beasts. There's going to be a variety of beasts, a variety of hunters, different abilities on them. And the hunter's goal is going to vary a bit by scenario you choose, but usually the hunter's goal involves, well, killing things. And the beast's goal involves killing the hunter. The hunter's goal, sorry. The beast involves so killing things. Murder. Murder and murder. Murder. The beast wants to kill various things, settlers and hunters and whatnot, and the hunters want to go and hunt down the beast and kill him, and the beast only has the various knights in this scenario, now, for instance, four knights, to get its goals done. It's not quite as simple as Cinder's implying. You see, there's a variety of different scenarios that you can play through, all giving you a narrative and script based on the environment that you're playing in, which is going to change based on the board that you're playing on, and like I said, the beast, the hunters, yep. and the story that you've chosen. For instance, this one was talking about us landing on this population, starting to ravage the earth, uh, take from like the forest and the resources, thinking that we found a land that was full of a plenty, and the beasts in the earth sort of rose up against us. A very Spirit Island-esque story, where you're not really the bad guy. No. You're just sort of wanting to return the land to Swampland, because that's where you populate and exist. And how do you feel that when you think about that now, and how that story went? When you plant eggs inside my stomach... Yeah. I feel terrible. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's going to be the game. There's going to be a variety of other factors going on to keep the, the challenge interesting. Uh, the Beast often uses this element called grudge, where you're all the players are trying to earn to level up various things. The problem with the Beast is the Beast is constantly trying to escape and run around and be hidden, which works well, except for the fact that you frequently have to do things to accomplish your goals, to earn grudge, that will all slowly reveal you. Along that, along with that, you have this element of the item cards you're going to be trying to get. The Beast has their talents, the Hunters have their items. You're going to have ways to level up and upgrade your characters, all at Adding to the puzzle of the game. Past that is going to be about the sequencing, the tracking, and the abilities, and coalescing all of those elements we talked about into a dangerous game of cat and mouse. And that's, I think, a high level overview. Did you touch on probably one of the most unique things they're integrating into this, which outside mm. of the asymmetry is going to be the drafting phase oh, when I it comes to actions? Drafting. I did. This is going to be, like I said, for a game like this to break into this genre, which is a very specific one, but I think maybe one game a year comes out that I think really does it well. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> this one, 
this one specifically is integrating a drafting system into the actions that you take. There's a hand of 16 cards. Everyone that's playing gets dealt four of those. And at the very start of the game, you're drafting alongside the beast that you're facing because the cards are double-sided. They can be used either by the heroes, the hunters, or the beasts themselves. And feel free to jump in at any point you'd like. Sure, she's looking at me being like, I just want permission to criticize or compliment. Yes, basically. You guys have very strong voices. Um, you also end up hate drafting, so yeah. that's another element. Besides for choosing what's best for you, you're also trying to deny the beast or the hunter, whichever team you're playing on, a card that might be beneficial for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a quick pause for, no, no, not putting on the spot, but like, raise your hand if drafting is your favorite mechanic from all the mechanics you know. I thought she'd raise her hand too. What's, I'm, trying, what's your... I'm trying to decide if it's drafting... Or, or area control is area control a mechanic though? Area control is absolutely a mechanic. I kind of like area control more. Okay, fine, yeah, fine. So it's just me. Mine's gonna be flavor text. <laughs> oh, that's not, <laughs> that's a, not mechanic. a mechanic. And no, Jamie Stegmeyer says it was, mm. is, and caveat to that, the next, the next one's gonna be deck building for me. Either way, a uh, point I is. I do like deck building too. Yes. The Not po the point of the video. The point Alex, is... Alex, would you tell us the point of the, the video? The point of my specific raising a hand moment, which I feel all left alone and abandoned. <laughs> There's the conflict you wanted. There it is. But uh, drafting is my favorite mechanic of all mm. time. My favorite games generally involve drafting from Blood Rage, from Inish Terraforming Mars. It, it's a mechanic that gives well, me a degree of tenseness of what am I going to do next? What am I going to pick for myself? Yeah. What am I going to pass to my opponents? And this has that in spades. Every single card feels so impactful. Do I want to move this turn? Do I want to attack? Do I want to earn grudge? Do I want to pull back ability cards. I want to upgrade my, my talents, my abilities. Every single thing is going to be such a tense moment of what's good for me, what's bad for them, and how do I even choose before we even get into the action phase of the game. Everyone matters for yourself and for your opponent. Everyone is not always always used in the game either. Yep. There's always a little bit of a discard. So in some of the drafts, I was sitting there going, please let the card that I want cycle through my hand. Don't let anyone else take it and please don't let it just be sitting out in the nethers. That's similar to Inish. And additionally, there mm -hmm. are some cards that you can draft that will allow you to pick through the discard that wasn't taken from will. and can pick through the community discard, yep. so, communal discard of everyone else using their cards. Kind of like dice manipulation, you get the chance to control for your draft to some degree. And on top of that, there's also going to be specific cards that allow you to either purchase items as the heroes or uh, beastly talents as the beasts, and those are going to be extra cards that get added to your action, action selection so you have more flexibility. Not all your draft cards are all of your actions. And finally, every creature and every hero has their own hand of special abilities that they have that can be buffed or debuffed as the game goes on. So there's a lot of nuance into that decision-making space around the cards. Yeah. Anything we want to go into? I mean, we've, we've been doing this for a while, but in terms of uh, what we liked, what do you want to go into? We talked about drafting extensively. Everything? Everything. The, everything. Everything. Uh, everything is what we the like. The drafting, the hidden movement I like especially. I like the artwork, mm -hmm. the oh, theme. Oh, it's beautiful. Those things always appeal to me. I even like these little bear minis. I <laughs> keep feeling them. They're a different texture than the pigs and the and sheep. And this is a prototype, so I'm not entirely sure what the actual final production will be. I'm curious what the, like, the meeple, if there's going to be meeples, or if the beasts and the hunters are actually going to be The artwork beings. and graphics is entirely based off of meeples, and so I assume that is going to be, whether or not they're customized at all, the red meeples and the white meeples will be standardized, as well as the sheep and pigs. I think the bears will probably actually be wooden yep. tokens or cut out to match everything else instead of these 3D printed. Uh, like they're this. harder to find random bear yes. minis, probably. And then, as far as I'm concerned, I don't need miniatures with this game. I, I hear that. I like I miniatures. I hear that. Miniatures. But the no, artwork, I always need miniatures. No, the artwork is so incredible. It's so thematic and lovely. I don't know that they add miniatures my experience. That. I, hear, I hear what you're coming from. I hear it. But uh, for myself, there's going to be a few things. We talked about drafting already. Uh, general hidden movement, I like... I've always have trouble with certain aspects of hidden movement games, but I like the genre in general. For me, one of the things this one does that is very well done that I don't think most hidden movement games do is the, the leveling up, powering up your, your characters in the game. It's not yeah. just about the hunt. It's not just about a few equipment cards you have. You are leveling up and developing who your characters are as you go through it. There is one core element that you would actually hate if you experienced it, mm -hmm. which I experienced... It's going to be the hard debuff on your heroes. Mm, yes. The moment you the, the moment you get attacked and get taken out, you actually lose your most powerful card. Oh, we're gonna get into that, but in the one, and the card that's tied to your abilities. Yeah, we're gonna so, get into that. What we can see others not. What we can. Okay. What we don't like ourselves. Because I have a bunch of things there as well. But I also like the variability. The fact that 
there's going to be multiple boards. There's a different combination of beasts versus Ton. hunters that you can always combine. The scenario you're playing with. The scenarios that you're playing with. The goals that you're trying to achieve. The, the item cards. Yeah, the item cards. Each beast has its own different like minions that they can spawn that each do different things with their special ability. There's a lot of variability. So for me, on um, before we get to the list of things mm -hmm. we don't like, for me, the overarching thing is just going to be the artwork and the theme. This game drips detail and drips precision. I like that I can tell the people who crafted this have spent time on the rule book, on the player, on like the player cards, on clear text that reads yeah. that reads cleanly in almost every instance. Uh, I really can tell that so much love and care has been paid to this. It is not just a washover. Yeah. Um, and that that matters a ton to me. Um, it's I've, similar to I compare this directly with Mind MGMT, um, and we advocated for that game. It arrived. It is beautiful. It is mind blowing with with the production quality on it, and it was a really good two player head to head hidden movement game. I'm I'm going to have both of these on my shelf. Yeah. Because they don't replace well, each other. I haven't other. played Mind MGMT. Yeah. They don't, they don't replace yep. each other for yep. me. This is this is a this is the three player one. Mind is going to be the two. Yeah. Um, one more thing I will say I like, I, I do like the way the tracking is in this game, where there's no writing or anything else, it's just a sequence of cards. I find that system, many, most, I, I, I don't know if, it, I don't know if Fury of Dracula has writing in it, but I think uh, many of these games often do rely on writing or an app or something like that. I don't believe things. Fury does. Yeah, Fury is actually one of the exceptions, but for the most part, they usually do revolve around some sort of tracking of what you're doing, how it's been going out, and I love the fact that this has just a string of cards that is frequently interrupted often enough, most of the time. Most of the time. It's going to be interrupted often enough that you don't have to have too hard a time tracking it. And that trail mechanism, that aspect of walking through where you've been traveling through and dropping off these little trails and having a taste and a hint of where they are, it works really well. Now... Every now and then, Shira usually works with a piece of grid paper or something yeah. to keep a track, and I don't know if they're working on I think I saw it commented somewhere that they're thinking about doing something that helps you track. Uh, it does introduce writing, which might be something that you don't want to play with, mm -hmm. but specifically, if you get 9 or 10 deep here, you could run into a situation where you miss one of your movements or you get which turned around. can be impactful. That can be really impactful yeah. because the players can't check for that. There's not and, a lot and of back and forth they're making all the decisions around. They're relying logic train, on you. And if you miss something, the logic train's yeah. flawed, and they're like, well, therefore, she's here, and really... And so, yeah. if you get turned around easily with directions or you find that you have a hard time tracking that, it's a simple solution when it comes to just a little piece of grid paper yeah. to track the directions that you took. Yeah. Which brings us to the what we can what we don't like section. Can I add one more thing that yes, I like? Yes, please. I like the fact that it's not easy. I felt challenged at multiple points yep. throughout the game. Both I as the hunter and the beast. Both as the hunter and as the beast. The restriction of being only to play a red card and a blue card hmm. when you really just want I to play two system. red cards or two blue cards <laughs> at some point is a restriction. The fact that I know a beast is like five spaces away and I only have want to do is get two there. movements and I cannot get there. <laughs> it makes a game enjoyable when you yeah. feel like you can't or do everything. you popping up and eating a sheep I in love, the space next I love to us, doing it. knowing there's no way for us to be there. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm going to enjoy a little dinner. Are you guys busy or something? <laughs> it's 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 a wonderful system. It is a lot of fun. But Now on to things we dislike. Stuff we don't like about the game. Let's go ahead and get into that. Jesse, you seem to you get to jump into some things. Uh, stuff I don't like about the game. There is a few things that I don't like about the game. First off, I already brought up the, the, the hard debuff yes. on your heroes. Jumping I, on that, I don't like that there's very few abilities that the hunters Thank can you. do. There's only two that we can yep. upgrade. The beast has a seven, seven eight, eight yes. six, depending on the Now, character. there's a lot of hunters you can play. There's a lot of hunters, but, but an each hunter game. only has yeah. two upgrades, and some of the upgrades are just a one-time use. So, One of my upgrades was to get a sword. I couldn't use that multiple times. I could use it once, and then the other one was to move yeah. a step. For instance, my hunter, both of my upgrades are tied to the card that I lose if I get knocked out. And I only have three health. So there's this balance of, I understand mm -hmm. it makes it risky. I understand it. But if you get knocked out after you've just spent so much on a single up. upgrade, yeah. even if, especially if you haven't been able to use that, which yeah. is one thing that's happened, that that hard debuff feels opposite of what the rest of the game experience feels like. Yeah. And I understand the nature of it. I get why, but... I don't really enjoy getting something taken away from me that I just worked really hard to equip. I, I understand on... dying needs to be punitive, but I feel like there could be other measures. You lose your rest of your turn. Yes. If you die early enough, you lose enough. everything. I was say, 
It, um, it's a huge... It, as much as I love the game, the challenge, and as much as that it provides a tactical incentive for the beast to weigh in when it's going to be a little more aggressive, and I think you kind of need that, mm -hmm. but maybe instead of the the full death, maybe the, the beast decides which town you respawn in. Maybe like there's, some, maybe there's a way to be as punishing without having you, you out of the game. which one you can't respawn in. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, again, yeah. I think I love the tactical decision of the beast having a moment of confrontation, mm -hmm. but I don't love the fact that you could be out of the round, and if it happens again twice to do the same person in one game, that's going to be a negative experience. You're yeah. like, oh great, I played half the I game watching. I don't mind getting removed from the round. Yeah, That I don't see as a negative debuff. I can control for that, and if I get caught off guard, I should lose for a round. That's okay. And then I'll be smarter. I'll think differently. Mm -hmm. Like, there's That's a really good moment and a really bad moment that I had agency over. Yeah. The problem is moments where you get debuffed, just like dice rolling, where you get debuffed because you don't have a and you don't have agency over it. And then like Shira said as well, I agree with you very much. I was leaning we directly towards you. We both love powers and abilities, and the fact that there's only two with the hunters. Yeah. For me, one of the things I'd say is I've played this game as both the hunter and the beast, and while I have a hard time thinking which experience I prefer, because I love evading the hunters and running around the map, but I also love the deduction of figuring out where the beast is, if I had to lean towards one, it would be the beast, I think, because of the flexibility of the ways I upgrade. I want more abilities on each hunter. Give me a few hunters. I don't mm. care. I want more abilities, more yeah. ways to develop this tableau, so it's not like, oh yeah, I got my three grudge, I traded in. I want to I wanna have like, I got my three grudge, now what do I do? Hmm. I still want, I want that choices. challenge. Yeah, I want those. I want those choices. Uh, anything else? I have a few small things. I have the else? art on the board. We talked about this in our games. I've talked about this in like, yeah. my very first play. Some of the trails. The trails can be hard to see. It's like we don't even know. Is there even a trail here? These things can be hard to like. You're often glaring and glancing and trying to figure out. Okay, great. Is there a, a moment? And it blends it beautifully into the board. It makes it a visually attractive board. But I think just I the stones need to be a bit brighter or a yeah. bit more highlighted. Um, Going on the artwork and the board design, I would prefer to have a player yes. in than to have upside down text. Yeah. In a scenario like this, we all have to sit on one side and yeah. we're all staring in one direction. I know the book says that the beast should sit on one side and the hunter yeah. should sit on the other side, but that's not always not feasible. Always. I, and it doesn't have to be at the expense of the board. You can keep the right, board the way can, it is yeah. and have players. Yeah. I think players are important. Again, just to go prototype. through the stages of dawn, day, yeah. and night. Very much prototype stage. It could well be that this was a plan, but just in terms of our experience. Another element with prototype stage, This I don't see this as necessarily... I see this as a midway up uh, midway plus, game yeah. when it comes to complexity, and part of the reason for that is... There's a lot of the, there's a lot of care taken to the rules of the game, but there's also a degree of nuance when it comes to the rules of the game. What you can and can't do in certain situations, how you reveal tokens based on what other elements are there, how traps get spawned, whether or not this area is adjacent, and if traps get spawned in it, if you reveal a beast. There's a lot of one-off situations. They do a lot to provide for it, but there is a bit of min-max. Like there's just a bit of, of double checking and and and. The Even core after rules are very simple, but there's edge cases, yeah. a lot of edge cases. Not crazy, and they all make sense. I don't have any complaints against any individual one, but it's going to add well, up. Well, in many games deep, we were still not... Even with three people who've yeah. played many games deep, we were still not 100% sure... Well, 100% well, like, oh, Watchtowers, those only came up once before, and it wasn't when I was the beast, so, like, how do I play with it now? Like, there's small little things like that where you're trying to... All the edge cases, really. But, yeah. Anything else? Outside I think that covers that. it for me. We covered, we covered all the, the things I want to cover. For me, I think it's mainly the abilities, the potential player elimination, the board a little bit. I would like the hunters to be able to get grudges a little easier. They grudges and only, action cards. They can only get grudges from cards, mm -hmm. and then a lot of the cards that the hunters use cost grudges. The beast has a lot easier of a time getting grudges to upgrade their board and to buy cards and use cards the, because they can kill so many animals. The economy is different, for sure. Yeah. Um, I... I, I like getting item cards, but item cards can also be win or loss style. I, like they can make or break a game. Yeah, and so like they're, maybe just they're maybe really, maybe they can really, make or break a game. They're really powerful to have on hand. So I I agree with you in the feeling that I I didn't feel like I had as much as I wanted, but in the reality of an economy system like that, as much as I want is also not the right answer. Maybe even if we kill the little minions, if the hunters could get a reward for killing the minions. Mm. Something. Again, you'd something have to, you'd have to balance. I'm okay with the concept. Yeah. But you have yeah. to balance the economy because then I'm less incentivized to make minions. You have to balance it all. I, but know, I, I don't disagree with you. I remember. I mean, I most of my games have been as a hunter, and I think the core gameplay I enjoy more. Not more uh, equal, but then the powers and abilities and leveling up felt a bit more restrictive. Most of my games were as the beast, and yeah. I side with the beast. Yeah. These guys are trying to take over my land. Which brings us to what we can see others not liking. Anything we missed? Anything that's not relevant to... So, hidden movement games as a whole have... 
it's ingrained in the nature of them that yep. they lend themselves to a lot of AP. Yes. Um, you're always trying to think through not only your turns and your actions and your abilities, but also what other people are potentially doing. Uh, and this game, even through multiple plays, has not forgiven itself when it comes to AP. This would actually still be on the list of things I don't like. Um, I don't want to play this game at high player counts. Yeah. A lot of hidden, hidden movement games have that. I haven't played it at 2 yet. I theorize that 2 is going to be a good experience, although the question is what the mitigation is for the drafting system. Uh, I have to double check that. They, they have a specific setup in it for it. I, I, can't I forget this. what it is. I think you draw two. You do, I think you draw yes. two cards at a time when you're the hunter. Okay. Yes, and you uh, divide it between the two players yeah. you're playing as. And then you can you have to keep your hands true yes, still. Yes, you have to keep yeah. two players. We'll check that. I theorize that this will play really well at two players. It, I think three players might be the sweet spot for it That's if everyone is opinion. collaboratively moving forward. I don't really have much desire to re-experience it at four. No. Yes. Um, and like, yes, I don't. <laughs> yeah. And and I think that's fine. That being said, four experienced players that really dive into this could probably have a great time. I'd play it with four if we had the group that wanted to table, that wanted to experience, yep. that all liked it. But it's certainly not my go-to. I'm not game. bringing a new player uh, in. It's, it's not my preferred. It's, I'm yeah. to it's tolerable. It's not like it's owned. Oh, no, I would never do that. But it's not my preferred player. So there's at all. there's a lot of AP. I'd say everyone's turns probably averaged a minute and a half to two minutes. And so yeah. in a three player game, I'm waiting for about five minutes before I'm going again. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I really have, what I can see others not liking, is going to be uh, you can have, and it's again what I can see others not liking. To me, it's not a problem at all. I love the experience. I love the thematic. I love whatever. But you can have things that really turn on a dime in between traps or abilities or cards. You'll have things that you may not be able to have predicted. You may have th thought that you perfectly planned a turn. You may have felt everything was in your control. And then something pops up that you're like, well, I couldn't have known that. The hunters are able to do things like lay traps yep. in every region that trigger if you take an attack in a region or reveal yourself, which is good for us. It provides yeah. a little bit of hidden movement for you where you're not quite sure what we've done and how we're messing with you. However, like you experienced, there's situations where we could also surprise you with an action or you don't know that we have an item in our hand or a certain card in our hand, and that can shift the nature of the game. Yeah. It can change the weight. It can put you on your heels. And again, I love it. I love the thematic connection to a game that is well played anyways, but it can be something that you're like, well, I did everything I could have, I should have, and it was out of my control, or I couldn't have seen it coming. So it might be a factor to be mindful on your end. Which the I other think element with hidden movement, if you have anything, the other warning sign I'd give to hidden movement would be the nature of typically the beast is the most fun to play. You, you enjoy the game. You enjoy the majority of the game. Well, that's a uh, one versus many type problem. Yeah. The one usually has more fun than the many, I found. And so I don't know that this... I think this is not different in that sense. I do think the Beast is probably the funnest role to play. Mm -hmm. However, I'd still say that it comes closer than most other games I've experienced to bringing both parties to the middle of the table. Yeah. Um, but as someone that has played Hunter in every game I've played... Because <laughs> that, that's, sure, sure. that's the thing I usually experience. In games like this... I normally advocate the most fun role to someone who is who is wants to play it or excited to play because I just want to play the game. Yeah. But I also sit there know, knowing that they get to know everything and solve the puzzle and be, be messing with people. And for me, this is the best role of the game. For me, I, I agree that... I agree on both counts. I agree that these kinds of games do slightly favor the hidden player in terms of the fun. But if it weren't for the power and ability imbalance, I think I'd have a hard time choosing which I prefer. Hmm. I really like both. The only reason that I lean towards the beast is, well, I get more flexibility is how I upgrade. Yep. That, that's the one fine line. If these hunters could be in some way tweaked to give you more options, I'd, I'd have a hard time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I think brings us to final thoughts and ratings and all of that. So, she is going, go going first on ratings. She's going first. So, you'll go first. So I'll go first. She's going first. Perfect. I'll go first. I'll go ahead and jump into it. Uh, overall, Beast by Studio Mid Hall is one that. I mean, I made it pretty clear from the beginning. We all like this game. It's an incredible experience. It really does things well. This is not a genre that has a lot of games. Surprisingly enough, most of the ones I've played, I've really enjoyed. It's a question of which ones I enjoy the most. And Studio... Uh, not Studio at all. Beast is going to be a contender for one of those that I enjoy the most in this genre. Uh, for me, it's going to be a 4 to 5. My rating scale is down below, but a 4 to 5 is going to be an excellent game. Uh, it's a little shy of the top tier, but excellent game. It has the potential to be a 5 if everything... If things were cleaned up, between multiple plays, if they this the whole about power and ability thing was twi it was tweaked a bit, it, it's just on the cusp. I really enjoy the experience. I'm eager to dive back in. It's one of those games that requires the right players, the right play time, and it's it's a really really solid experience that I'm looking forward to continuing to play. Yeah, I I'm split on this um, because I I want to give it a rating based on its space in this genre of games, mm -hmm. 
And then I also want to give it a rating based on it as a game, just as a game as sure. a whole. And, and that's a hard position for me to be in, acknowledging that I typically choose the less fun option for myself when mm -hmm. I play these games. I don't often get these games to the table, and they're not my favorite mechanic systems out of everything. Like, yeah. They're a little bit removed from what games would hit my number five spot. That's why I am. I've never put a hidden movement game as a five for me. Yep. Yet. They, they, they're always very good. I always enjoy them, but they, they tend to land at fours. This is a strong four for me. Mind MGMT was competitive for a five, if not in a five spot. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't call it a perfect game, so I'd probably it'd be like a 4.7 if I was going to round up. I'd be <laughs> split and probably leaning there. This is going to be right around that same spot. It's like a 4.2 to a 4.5. Yeah, uh, it's. I wouldn't tell anyone it's a five out of five because of the nature of that statement for my own personal collection. I would tell them it's a four out of five, but I'd say it's an incredible hidden movement game. And if you're ranking it in the space of hidden movement games that I've played, this competes. This competes directly with Mind. And Mind, as far as I can, and you can go watch my coverage of it. Mind was at the time and still is the best hidden movement game I've played. And this, I would say, is equal with it. Um, Very cool. And so, and I. I, honestly, the nuance would be the amount of people you have in your player group. Um, I think mine plays higher player counts better, and maybe lower player counts better. I think this in the middle um, is really, really solid. It holds its three-player space probably better than anything else. Cool. I'm leaning very similar to you guys, using board game codes, <laughs> rating system. I use decimals within that system, and it's a 4.5. I won't be upset if my friends don't want to play it, but I think it is a I would. solid, great game. Oh. Then it's a five out of five. No, 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 no. So that is the terminology of your I know, five. I know. This is what it has the potential to be a five. It has potential. It's not there for me yet. It very much has potential. If you I just want playing, more powers. Give them powers and abilities me, on the heroes, uh, and it's honestly, a five. Honestly, honestly, it's hidden movement, which is a genre that's <laughs> consistently delivered force for me. It's given me drafting, which is something that I love. Yeah. It does a really, really solid job. You give me the powers and abilities on the hunters. Just it's, a little bit more. It might. It's a decent chance. It's a decent chance. But yeah, go back to you. Go back. We go back no, to you. No, I mean that's. I feel the same way. I really like it. I did not enjoy my experience as a hunter as much as I enjoyed my experience as a beast, and for that I have to take it down a little bit because I want to be able to enjoy both roles yeah. when I'm playing. But to be clear, if all of us said we don't want to play it again, you wouldn't be upset. I'd find other people. That that's quantum. Either way, that is basically going to be our review of Beast. A whole bunch of fours bordering on fives over here. Like I said at the beginning, this is not a game where we are split on our opinions. We we like a lot of stuff about it. We have critiques. We have things we want to see improved upon. That's the best part about reviewing prototypes is our complaints are actually feedback. Might. Yeah. I mean, the stuff that we talked about here, there's a strong chance they're going to watch this, take us as playtesters, yeah. and do some tweaks. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to see it. But either way, I'll still play it no matter what happens because I'm really enjoying this experience. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And I'm a duck. I'm a raven. We'll see you next time. You didn't say have a good one. Yeah, because you said I'll see you next time. Get in there, man. No, no, I'm good. I'm Do good. it. Tell I'm them. Good. Tell them. Have a good one. I still can't say it now. <laughs>